Hey guys, it's Michelle. Welcome to my vegan kitchen. Today we're going to make seitan. And for those of you who are not familiar with, with seitan, it's an excellent meat substitute, especially for vegans. Uh, seitan is so simple and easy to make. I, that's why I had to make this video. You can use it to replace anything that you would normally, any recipe you would make um, that you would use meat in. Um, basically, seitan is made from gluten flour. So something as easy as just gluten flour, we're just going to add a, a couple of simple ingredients. I think we probably used maybe five or six ingredients to make this. It cooks so quickly. So I've used uh, seitan for, I've used it for stews, uh, beef stew, chicken stew. I've used it in soups. I've used it in wraps. I've used it to make uh, Asian dishes. You can use it anything that you could think of that you normally use for meat, you would use seitan for. And as we go through the recipe, I'll show you how you can change the flavor from beef to chicken and so forth. But, you know, we're going to make this nice and easy. Another thing is, this is why I love seitan. Now, for people who are gluten sensitive, unfortunately, this is not the recipe for you. But if you're not gluten sensitive, this is perfect. It is so high in iron, it's high in protein, it's, and it's low in calories. So for about a quarter cup, which we're not going to eat that much uh, seitan in a meal, it's about 120 calories. So again, it's just such an easy meal substitute. I use it all the time. But you know what? Let me show you how easy it is. Let's get started. So let me grab my bowl. And I just get a nice big bowl like this. In the bowl, I'm going to put two cups of gluten flour. And my little measure right here. I mean, look how easy this is. Two cups. So one and two. And the full recipe is on my website. But I just wanted to do this video just so you guys could follow along because it sounds harder than it is. And I remember the first time when um, I saw or, or saw a recipe with seitan, I was like, there's no way. I'm not going to make that. That looks so hard to do. There's no way I'm going to do that. But I tried it and I couldn't believe. You see me here? I'm looking for my tablespoon. Okay, so we're going to just add one tablespoon of chickpea flour. Chickpea flour is another good um, alternative flour. It is alkaline, so if you're worried about your foods being more on the alkaline side, this is perfect. Again, this is high in protein. It's high in iron. So for those of you, and let's see, there's something else, and it's loaded with vitamins. So basically, it's just dehydrated chickpea. So I'm going to put a tablespoon. Put that in and my seasoning. And this is basically, I kind of put everything in here, but it's garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika. But I'm gonna add a little bit of my special seasoning. Guys, look, I got the all-purpose seasoning from my vegan kitchen. Yes, ma'am. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that because this has almost every flavor that I need in there. So I put a half a teaspoon. All I'm gonna do, put it in a bowl. All my dry ingredients are all in a bowl. Let me grab a spoon real quick. I'm gonna use, you can follow me if you want. I'm gonna use a metal spoon because this gets a little tough and my plastic spoon may bend a little bit. So all I'm doing is combining all the ingredients, all my dry ingredients. See that? I'm just mixing it all up. And that's it. Now I'm going to add water. And I'm going to do about one and a quarter cup of water. Now when I add my water, I try to do it slowly because this starts to thicken up and I'm probably not going to use all of this water. I'm just going to use some of it. So here we are, dry ingredients. Look how easy this is. This is crazy. Let me get everything ready because it gets so weird. All right. 
going to pour the water right in. And I poured about a cup of water in. Now I'm going to use my spoon to mix it all up. And you see it starts to tighten up right away. I'm going to add some more water, mostly along the sides. And I'm going to use my spoon again as it starts to tighten up. And once it gets like that, just a drop. And as you can see, I didn't really use all of the water. And I'm going to get my hands in here because I really want to knead this. See, it's kind of watery. But I'm getting all of what's on the sides. And I'm just kneading that dough. But look at it. It's like putty. I love it. You can see all the seasoning and see how stretchy it gets. I'm just going to knead this. And I'm going to knead this for about maybe a minute or two because I want to make sure all the ingredients is incorporated. And this is um, wheat gluten. So you need to mix the ingredients in really, really carefully because we want it to be able to expand and get tight. So about two minutes. I probably wouldn't suggest, you know, there's so many uh, seitan recipes on the market and there, there's just so many. Everybody has a different way of doing it. I found from trial and error that this is the best way for me and my recipes. It just works way better. So basically, some people are probably going to say you could put it in a food processor. I think just kneading it by hand is the best and the easiest way to get everything in. That's probably about a minute or so. And it's a good workout too, if you're into that stuff. All right. And that's basically it. We're just gonna kind of shape it, put it in the bowl. That's it. We're gonna put this on the side for about five minutes just to let it rest. And while it rests, come with me. I'm gonna put it right over here. We're gonna get the water ready. Now we're gonna steam or boil the seitan in flavored broth. And basically, I have a nice big pot or Dutch oven. You just want a pot that you're able to have a nice heavy lid because we're going to, we're not going to cover it all the way. We're just going to kind of leave it where it just simmers just a little bit. So I'm going to turn the water up because you want to get this water boiling. And to the water, I'm going to add, let me get my measuring Liquid aminos. We're going to add two tablespoons of liquid aminos. We're going to add oil. And I use grapeseed oil a lot. This is from Trader Joe's, but I mean, grapeseed oil, just make sure it's not a blend. I'm noticing a lot now that grapeseed oil is becoming popular. There's a lot of canola oil blends. Make sure it's pure grapeseed oil. And again, I love grapeseed oil because there's no flavor. So it's not going to add like an oily flavor to your pot. I'm going to put two tablespoons of grapeseed oil in. The oil helps the seitan when it's cooking not to stick at the bottom and this right here oh i love it i love it i love it i love it this is what's going to give us that um broth flavor it's rich in onions we're going to use just about a teaspoon of it dump it right in there swirl it around as it melts get all the goodness in there and that's it that's our broth. That easy. And see the water is boiling? That's perfect. So as that water boil up a little bit, we're gonna go back to the seitan and let me show you what we do with it now. I'm gonna grab my cutting board. 
Let's get some of these ingredients out of the way. Move my pot right there. And grab a sharp knife. Okay. Okay, Satan looks about ready. Now, Satan just looks like a big old glob right now. Forecasting my week and what recipes I'm going to need, I'm going to divide this in different meats, in different pieces. So I think I'm probably going to make a beef stew. So I'm going to cut little chunks. So when it cooks up, it will look like little pieces of beef. Um, I think I may use some of it for sandwiches or um, for a wrap. So I'm going to leave a hole, basically a big whole piece. And if I, let's say I wanted to make steak, I'm going to cut like a steak looking piece and boil it that way. Now, again, different people have different techniques of how they do it, but I found from experimenting that it's best to cut it in the shape that you want for the meal that you want before you actually cook it. Some people will tell you to wrap this up and foil loosely and boil it just that way, but I found when I do it that way, it comes out too solid, and then I have to slice it like beef, and not all my recipes, I want the beef to look that way, or the meat to look that way, if that makes any sense. So, I'm going to cut this in half, and it's real sticky, but just use a little bit of pressure, and look at that, coming close, because this is so weird. Look at it. It's all seasoned, so I'm going to put this piece on the side, and it's a lot. This will last maybe three different meals for a family of four. I'm going to cut this again in half. And I'm going to cut these in little pieces. When seitan cooks in the pot, in the boiling water, it swells. So it's going to swell two to three times larger than the pieces that I'm cutting. So I kind of cut these pieces a little smaller because this is going to be like gigantic in the pot. I think I may do it a little smaller. That's, that's about a good size. And this is going to be for my beef stew. I'm going to cut this right here. And I'll do small pieces and big pieces. It's pretty sticky, but when it's cooked, it won't be as sticky. This is just amazing. When I discovered this, I was like, where have this been? Probably was always there. I just never paid attention. And it's so crazy now because in restaurants, they will serve you seitan as the meat, and especially in vegan restaurants or Asian restaurants. A lot of Asian restaurants uh, will have meat-free dishes, and a lot of them use seitan. A lot of the, um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, like chicken wings, they use a lot of seitan. Look at that. That's a lot of beef or a lot of meat or a lot of seitan. <laughs> I know, my silly human. It's okay. All right, and this, this is a good amount. So that's one pile. Then the second pile, I'm gonna do slices. So look at this, I'm just gonna cut it like this. And that will just be like a piece of meat because I can probably use that for like chicken fried steak because you can bread it and fry it. That's another piece, and that's another piece. And I think I want a couple more cubes because I'm finding that I'm using more cuby meat than big pieces of meat. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to make a couple more cubes because while I'm doing this, I'm thinking of um, different recipes I'm going to do, and I think I'm going to do beef stew. I think I may do some curry chicken. I can probably do some chicken nuggets. There's so much. And I think I'd want the cubey pieces better than having to slice a whole piece. And I just find that it makes it juicier when you have the little chunks, when you cook it in liquid, or if you have to fry it, then having to slice that big piece. Just a couple more pieces and we'll be done. And that's it.
So I have my cubes here. I have my large chunk will, that will swell a little bit bigger. I have my pieces of steak. And we're going to the pot. So come with me to the pot. And I love these uh, flexible mats because it makes it so easy to get food in the pot. Okay, so come in close because I'm just gonna drop these in. And that's it. Like I said, they're a little sticky now, but once they cook, I do try to separate them though before I put them in the pot. But once they cook, it won't be as sticky. And seitan, because it is gluten, that's what makes meat, oh, I'm sorry, that's what makes baked goods have that nice texture. So gluten is a little sticky. Let me lay this down for a second. I need to manhandle these, a woman handle these. <laughs> I know I have a dry sense of humor. Only I get my humor. I'm putting these all in. I had to keep them separated on the mat first so they don't get all stuck together. But the texture is going to be so nice because it's kind of rigid around the edges. So to me, it'll look more like meat. And then we're going to put our big old super piece right in here. And that's it. We put it in a pot. We're going to cover it slightly. So we're going to leave just a little bit of a gap. We're going to place it on medium. And we're going to cook it for an hour. That's it. In an hour, what, we, what I normally do is check back every couple of minutes, maybe every 10 minutes or so. Stir the pot because... Remember, it's going to swell up. So, you know, they're going to try to fight and stick to each other and stick to the bottom. So I'll just stir and make sure there's none stuck to the bottom. And that's it. Just keep checking it for an hour. However, I do set a timer. So let me set this for 60 minutes. Because sometimes you forget. Oops. There it is. Sometimes you forget that it's cooking and it will burn. And you don't want to burn your seitan because then it gets hard and nasty. Plus, we're going to have some delicious juices left that we can make uh, safer broth. So that's it. That's it. I'll see you guys in an hour. We're going to let it cook. And when you come back, we're going to make beef stew with the seitan. Okay, guys. Let's check in on the seitan. It's been about 10 minutes. Look at this miracle. It swole up. Look how big these steaks are. <laughs> it's huge. And that's why I cut them the way I did. And I'm just, just going to stir it, make sure nobody's sticking. But look at that. Look at that. It's crazy. All right. That's it. We'll check back in 15 minutes. We'll check back in 15 minutes. All right. It's been an hour. Our seitan is ready and cooked. So let's turn off the heat. And that's what it looks like. It's swollen. Remember, this was our large piece right here. These are our other pieces, the smaller ones. See how much bigger they got? But they look really, really good. Perfect. So I'm just going to take these out. I'm just going to remove this large piece. Slowly get them all out. Let me switch my spoons here and get us slotted. So we don't get any of this good juice. I'm just going to place these in a separate container. It's really hot. So we just, we, I want this to cool down just a little bit. And I'm going to show you how to do a nice, quick, and easy beef stew. What's wonderful about the seitan is that it's, it's cooked. This is it. What I normally do, I'll separate it. I'll take out what I want for beef stew. And I'll just refrigerate for the rest of the week. And it's so easy to make dinner. Dinner literally will take like 20 minutes. But come in here, camera girl. So usually there's a little bit of, um, I will say broth left over. There wasn't much this time, but sometimes I have a little bit more. I'll usually just bottle it. I'll just get like a mason jar, put it in there. And then I have broth for the week. So you can add your broth to anything, to rice, quinoa, whatever you want. And that's it. We're going to let this cool down. I'm going to let this cool down a little bit, and I'm going to come back and show you how to do the beef stew recipe. I'm going to package this all up, 
put it some in the refrigerator and then we're just gonna have the beef stew seitan ready for you, okay? I'll be back. All right, come in, let me show you the beef stew. So we're back. So this is what the meat, the seitan basically looks like. And if you can see, it, it does look like chunks of beef, okay? So this recipe is the, what I'm gonna do now is the um, seitan beef stew. It's on the website. So in a Dutch oven, I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of grapeseed oil. Sorry. And let that warm up just a little bit. Let me just cover this up. I pre-diced. I have some potatoes, and this is just um, russet potatoes, some carrots, some thyme, about four sprigs of thyme, some garlic. I love garlic, so this is about four garlic um, cloves chopped. I also have some curry powder, and I know this is beef stew and not curry. However, a tablespoon of curry powder in your beef stew gives it such rich flavor. You really don't taste the curry. It just gives it a good base. Okay. So now our pot looks like it's warmed up. We're just gonna brown these pieces of seitan. So we just wanna get them a little bit brown just to get some texture on them. And that should take maybe about a minute or so to get them brown. Make sure they don't stick, so just keep checking it. Some medium heat. You just keep checking in on that. But isn't this crazy? This is wonderful. And the batch that I made, there was so much seitan left over and I put it in the refrigerator. And usually it'll last for maybe a week and a half. But like I said, it's unlimited what you can make. You can make stews, curries, soups, sandwiches, um, barbecues. You can grill it. You can fry it. You can... It's unlimited, it's unlimited. And the texture, if you notice how nice and bouncy it is, just like chicken would be. It's not hard, it's not soft. But out of all the recipes that I've tried, this one right here is perfect. It's not too hard, it's not too soft. Okay, so now that the seitan has browned up just a little bit, I don't want it too brown, I'm gonna add garlic. And I just want the garlic to kind of open up the flavor just a little bit. Yeah, just move that around. And right now it's releasing all the oils. It smells so, so good. My God, this is so good. And we don't want the garlic to burn, so we're gonna put in our chopped onions and I have some of that right over here. I'm gonna put the chopped onion, and because the onion will release some moisture, it will keep my garlic from burning. Just stir that up. And as soon as those onions become a little bit translucent, that means it's released most of the flavor into the meat, I'm gonna add curry powder. Now the seitan is seasoned. Remember, we put it in that seasoned broth, so it has flavor. You can eat it straight out like this. It's already cooked. You don't have to re-cook it or you could eat it just like this. So you don't have to add salt to it, but I am going to add some curry powder. And just a tablespoon. Like I said, this gives it depth, so it tastes really warm. So when we say comfort food, we want this to be really comforting. That smells so, so good. You see the onions got really translucent. And this, adding the curry powder right now really gets absorbed into the seitan, so it really sticks. So the flavor really sticks. Mm 
Okay. All right, take a look. So if you notice the, the oil has been absorbed, this is a good time to put your potatoes. I'm gonna put the potatoes and the carrots in. Okay, put those bad boys in, stir it up so you get all the flavor. And it's nice to put your vegetables in when the pot is dry like this because it really absorbs the flavors of whatever you have in the pot before you add the liquid. That's it. Give it about a minute. Let it kind of absorb everything in. While it's absorbing, I am going to... Now, if you're familiar with my recipes, I always add, and in America it's called habanero peppers. I'm Jamaican, and in Jamaica we call this scotch bonnet pepper. It is hot. However, I love the flavor and the warmth that it adds to all, almost all of my recipes. The secret, though, we're not going to cut it or open it because we don't want this pot to be so hot that we can't eat it, but we want that warmth, that real Caribbean flavor to it, if you know what I mean. So what I normally do, I just... Pop the little stem off, that nice little hole that's left right in there. It will absorb some of the liquid. The seeds won't get inside of the pot and make it too hot. I'm gonna drop that in right now. And I just put it, snug it right in the middle of the meat so it gets some of that heat. I'm gonna also add the thyme. I'm gonna pop that right on there. And about now, I'm gonna add my no beef broth. I love this product. I love it, love it. It's 100% vegan. It's delicious. It has a lot of flavor. It cooks nice. And I put, they have a wide range of different flavors. So they have chicken, they have um, ramen, they have miso, they have fish. So if you ever wanna make, for my Jamaicans out there, fish tea soup, they have a fish broth. So. Again, I love it, love it. Now, I've only been able to find it at Whole Foods or maybe Amazon, but Whole Foods is usually where I find it. And again, the recipe is on my website, so I'm not going to measure this out at all. I'm basically just going to cover the meat. That might be about two cups or so. And that's it. I'm going to cover this up. Let it come to a boil, check on it in about five minutes, and we'll see how good it's gonna be. All right, so coming a little closer, let me show you what's going on. So it's been about 10 minutes, and this is what the meat looks like. So see, it's cooked down a little bit. Now we're gonna add some spices. The first thing, and I know everybody's like, well, what's going on? We're gonna add some ketchup. Again, the acidity in the ketchup is just going to give it some flavor. Just stir that around. Turn this up a little bit to medium. Okay, and I'm going to add this little mixture here is some ground ginger, cumin, uh, allspice. I'm gonna put that in here. Like I said, the full recipe is on the website. Mm, mm. Oh, yeah. That smells so good. So good. It just smells like comfort. If you just wanna sit down and just eat this. I'm gonna add now Gravy Master. Gravy Master just gives it color and body. You want to put that right in and see that gives it like it rounds it down a little bit. I'm going to give it a little taste. Make sure all is good. It's a little hot. Hold on. Mm, all is good. Ooh. It's a little spicy, so you know what we're gonna do? 
I'm going to remove this pepper. I'm just going to put it over here. It has released the flavor, enough flavor that I want for this pot. Because again, I don't want the pot to be spicy. I just want it to be warm and flavorful. Okay, so I stir it up. I'm going to put the cover on again. Give it probably another 10 minutes. Allow the potatoes to cook. Once the potato and the carrots are cooked, it's done. I'm going to just turn it to a medium low. Okay, I'm going to cover it up. Give it another 10 minutes. And it should be done. Yep. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes. Checking in. We're going to remove this piece of thyme here. All the leaves have come off. We don't want that in the pot. We don't want anybody to be chewing that up. But look at it. Look at the stew. Look at it. Is this not? Look, look at this. Oh, my God. So it's good to go. I'm going to grab my rice. Hold on. I'm sure it might open. <laughs> All right. I got some steamed white rice. Just add some stew. Get some carrots over here. Just look at this. This right here. All right. It's a little hot. Well, let me grab a fork. Let's taste this. All right. It was a little hot. Let me give it a second. But guys, wasn't that easy? That was so, so easy to make. And remember, because you've made so much of the seitan that's in the refrigerator, you could, you have food for the whole week. It's high in protein. It's high in iron. The only thing, if you're gluten sensitive, you want to stay away from it. But other than that, I fed this to my family and they're even like, oh my God, this tastes just like meat, like beef. I'm going to try it now. All right, let's get this little piece right here. Ooh, it looks hot, but it looks good. All right, here we go. The texture is right. Not too soft, not too hard. It absorbed all the flavors. This is delicious. I hope you try this recipe. Again, it's on my website. It's the beef, the seitan beef stew. It's quick, it's easy, like I said, it's delicious. I thank you guys so much for sharing my vegan kitchen with you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe and like this video and I'll see you next time for another another you spending time in my vegan kitchen. Thanks guys. Bye.